Today, we're doing science. Now, if you saw my last video, you know MEV is real. And if you haven't seen that video, go watch that video first before coming here. We had some users theorize easy ways to block the MEV. Like this one, hey, would you still get front run if there was an access control? Like if message.sender is not Patrick's address, then revert? Now, obviously, if our withdraw function had only owner, of course, that would block an MEV bot. However, most of the time, you're not gonna have access to the contract that you're trying to interact with. As you saw in the last video, if we as a user directly called this withdraw function without a private RPC, we would get front run. So the theory here is, well, what if we deployed an intermediate contract that had an only owner function? That way, if the MEV bot tries to front run this transaction, they will get blocked since they're not only owner, sort of like an MEV contract bouncer. So let's potentially waste another 50 bucks trying to figure this out. To test this, we're gonna build an intermediary contract called don't MEV me. And right in the constructor, we're gonna have an owner and then the address of the contract that normally gets front run, but we're hoping this contract will block. And we're gonna save the owner and the, and the contract that we're gonna call as storage variables. In order for us to interact with the contract, we're of course gonna use an interface. And the bulk of the work is gonna be done in this go function, which is gonna take a password to add to the withdraw function. And right here in the first line, we see if message.sender is not equal owner, we should revert. Then we're gonna call withdraw, the money should go to this contract, and then we're going to send the money back to us. And of course, in order for this contract to receive any funds, we need to have a receive function. So this will be the full bouncer contract, the same MEVable contract as before. Let's ride. To get started, you can see in our MetaMask, we have around $76 or 0.45 ETH. We're gonna deploy our MEV contract with a password. The password is gonna be the Foundry Stablecoin had too many bugs, WTF. That's the hash. We're gonna paste it in here. We're gonna deploy this contract with 0.02 ETH or around $40. And we'll hit deploy. We'll confirm sending this. And great, on Etherscan, we can see our contract has been created with around $40 in it, and we can see it in Remix here. So now we flip over to Don't MEV, and we're gonna deploy our bouncer contract with the address of the MEV contract as the input parameter. I had to top this up with a little bit more ETH in order to deploy this second contract. We've added the address in here. Hit deploy, confirm, and this has indeed gone through. So now we have two contracts here. One that's the MEV contract, and then one that's our bouncer contract. If we were to call withdraw right now, as we know, we would get front run. But if we call the bouncer contract, are we gonna get front run? <laughs> yeah, we'll be safe, right? Well, you know the drill. We're grabbing our password, we're gonna stick it in here, and we're gonna hit the go button. Here's how much money we currently have. Now, if this works, this number should go up, but if this doesn't go up, it means the MEV bots are smart enough to see this, dissect the bytecode and go around our bouncer contract directly to the contract itself. All right, let's do some science to check this out. Confirm. A few inches later. We are definitely poorer. So if we go to our contract that previously had $40 in it and now has nothing, and we scroll down to transactions, you can see here, somebody did call the withdraw function, but this address is not our bouncer. This is somebody else. They skipped the line. In our bouncer contract, our go function did get called, we just didn't get any money. So we can actually see who called this withdraw transaction, who front ran us, and we can see it looks like, sure enough, this is indeed an MEV bot doing MEV. If we select their transaction, we can see how much they paid in gas for this. They only paid a dollar. So they made a $39 profit off of this front running transaction. Now this means the monsters are more terrifying than even you thought they were. The reason it's easy for them to do this is because again, in the mempool, they can see in the bytecode when a contract calls another contract. So they just skip the line and just call the other contract directly. So if you think you're gonna be clever and use a bouncer only only contract to block MEV, think again, you will still get front run. Hope you learned something. Stay froggy and we'll see you next time.